Race is one of the most durable and problematic concepts that exists in, in modern human civilization. It is a concept that is born of 18th century European philosophy and that includes, or the definition of races, traditionally have included mixtures of biological, behavioral, and social and cultural characteristics. So they become these sort of these uh, unwieldy categories of supposedly connected things that travel in tandem. The concept is problematical because these things aren't connected and they don't travel in tandem. And yet they, the concepts remain durable because people associate them with having a reality. And they become reinforced because people think that they're real. When we think about how different levels of skin pigmentation have evolved, it's really helpful to think first about what the original configuration was in our ancestors. Beginning around 70,000 years ago, a few populations started to leave Africa. What's critical here is that our ancestral Homo sapiens stock was very darkly pigmented because in equatorial Africa and throughout much of Africa, there are high levels of ultraviolet radiation in the sunlight. And our body's way of protecting against those high levels of radiation is to have permanent high levels of melanin pigmentation in the skin. We know also that as people left equatorial regions where levels of ultraviolet radiation were lower, there were actually evolutionary pressures for them to lose some of their pigmentation so that they could continue to manufacture vitamin D in their skin under lower levels of ultraviolet radiation. So although we don't know precisely when these loss of pigmentation events occurred, we know that beginning probably around 40,000 years ago, the ancestors of Europeans and Eastern Asians who were beginning to deploy into these regions started to undergo loss of pigmentation. They started to become lighter and they did this through independent genetic mutations, which is very exciting from an evolutionary perspective. So we see these uh, levels of pigmentation being played with a lot in the last 50,000 years of modern human history. It's very, very exciting and interesting because there's an interaction between our biological evolution and the cultural factors that influence that evolution. Even though we have lots of genetic information to demonstrate that different attributes of appearance are not genetically related to one another, and these in turn are not related to behavioral or cultural attributes, the fact that people still associate these things together and they carry the tradition, the inherited tradition or meme of race from one generation or from one place to another. That's what gives the race concept its still very important social reality. Humans are very visually oriented animals and we take notice of differences in appearance, but we have no way of automatically assigning a value to those things that we notice. So we may notice that people have different colored skin or hair, but without any cultural information about the values of those attributes, we don't assign any. So little kids, for instance, when they look at different people, they will just say, yeah, there's a different person who looks a di bit different than the people I'm used to. They will only begin to think either positively or negatively about them if the people around them have something to say about the appearance of the people or if they react even non-verbally to those people. In this way, there is bias that is transmitted, both favorable and unfavorable, during the course of a child's lifetime. But before the age of three, and for most kids before the age of six, this bias is negligible. 
And there is no innate discrimination that they make in their minds based on skin color or any other physical attribute. We live in a wonderful age of recognition and acknowledgement of human diversity. And it is important that we talk about the discoveries of human diversity, whether we're talking about genetic diversity, linguistic diversity, cultural diversity. It's very important that we talk about these openly and that we educate our children about them. It's only through open discourse and open education that we will be able to recognize that we live in this beautiful tapestry of the human species with many different combinations of physical and behavioral traits and that the fact that things are so varied and yet we are still so similar in our intelligence and in our behavioral flexibility and our prodigious abilities to create new ideas and technologies that these things are you know overwhelmingly important